In today's show, we're going to talk about how to install the patterns and practices PowerShell command lines for SharePoint Online. Lots of the letter P, apparently. The, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to look at you know, how to get those running, how to get connected to SharePoint Online, and then talk a little bit about how those command lines are different than the very limiting ones that come with Office 365. Should be an interesting topic. Should be pretty quick, I hope, as well. So, but first, our intro. <laughs> Hello, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras, those guys, and in today's show we're going to talk about getting the PowerShell commandlets from the Patterns and Practices team and get those deployed so that you can take advantage of those with your SharePoint Online subscription. Right? You probably have, like myself, found that the ones that Office 365 provides for SharePoint Online, all 56 of them, are pretty limiting. Really, they're no good for anything other than saying, yep, I can get a site, yes, I can create a site, and that's about where the fun stops. Well, the patterns and practices pieces, we're going to look at how we could, you know, be able to create a list, add a list item views, uh, you know, manipulate different objects, and actually start to do some real productive things with PowerShell. And if you're like me, a PowerShell junkie, that's exactly what you want to do. So let's just jump in here and take a look. Well, here on my machine is a Windows 10 uh, VM. I'm logged in as a local administrator, and I'm going to start out here by going to Start, and then we'll type in our friend Power. Then I'm going to right click on the Windows PowerShell and I'm going to say run as administrator. We'll click yes at the user access control. And so now we have our PowerShell prompt up. And the very first thing I want you to do before you even worry about any of this other stuff is I want you to type in start dash transcript. All right? If you've watched any of my other videos, you know how I feel about this, but just in case you're, this is the first one, start transcript allows you to log everything that you type in and everything gets presented back to you on the screen for your entire PowerShell session. So that way you've got a history of all the things you've done, which can be either a CYA or a, oops, yep, that's how I destroyed everything. Or if you've learned and created new scripts and you don't want to lose them or have to figure out how to make them again, they're always going to be logged here in this text file. So I'm a big fan of start transcript to uh, keep you out of trouble. The next thing we need to do is I need you to type in get execution policy. And so you can see that mine is set to remote signed. You're going to need yours to be set to remote signed or a lesser privilege. You know, it says all scripts can run or something crazy like that in order for these commandlets to work. I recommend remote signed. It's easy. It works well. And if you need to set yours, what you want to do is you want to type in set execution policy and then remote, right? And then you can use tab complete to speed that along and hit enter. You'll get warned that you're setting your policy. That's okay. It's Oh, safe to do so you can do a Y and hit enter and why is it safe because I told you to and anything you hear on the internet must be true but if really if you have any concerns about it you should do your own research on the security ramifications of it I can tell you I've done my research remote science seems to be the way to go and it's the default in some OS's and in other OS's it's set to restricted so that's why we just cover it real quick good okay so now that that's done, I'm going to do a little CLS, clear the screen off. Now what you need to do is you need to run the commandlet install-module and then SharePoint PNP PowerShell Online and press enter. And so when you do this, it's going to warn you after it took me probably 30 seconds that I just cut out for you, but it's going to warn you, hey, it's pulling something from the PS gallery. Do you trust pulling things off the internet, right? It's not something you've already installed in your local machine. Well, yes, I, I trust that internet thing still. So we'll do yes. And so now it's going to go out to GitHub and pull all those down and or not GitHub, but the uh, online gallery and pull all those down and then uh, make them available for you here. So that way you don't have to go and install EXEs or MSIs or any of that type of stuff. And while that's installing, what we'll talk about real quick, open up a browser here. If you aren't familiar with them, then what you want to do is you want to navigate off here to GitHub, uh, Office Dev PMP PowerShell. So this is where you can get the source code, you get all the latest builds. They have forms where you can ask questions or raise issues. There's a wiki. All types of resources to help you with these commandlets, right? Because these aren't official Microsoft commandlets. These are ones that a bunch of Microsoft people built in order to help um, further along the cause of doing more with SharePoint Online. All right, so it looks like I got an error message over here. And so here you can see that it's like, hey, you're trying to install this package, but you've already got something called Get SPO Site. So there's, uh, there's some conflict. Well, I was actually expecting that. So what I want you to do, I want to make sure you saw it, is I want to do a dash allow clobber. And so that says, go ahead and overwrite this PowerShell with the other PowerShell that's out there. And so what's causing that is I've already installed the SharePoint Online PowerShell commandlets that came with um, from the Office 365 people provided, right? Those are in a previous video, which are linked down in the comments if you want to see that video. 
but they both have a commandlet called get SPO site. So you need to let this one right over top of the other one. And so then once again, it's reminding me that we're in an untrusted gallery. So we'll say why. And so back to off the races, pulling those down from the PowerShell gallery. Okay, so that took, you know, 30 seconds or so to install, not too bad, but now we should have access to all those commandlets. And so before we start playing with those commandlets, what we need to do is we need to get our credentials saved so we can authenticate and log in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna steal some uh, PowerShell from uh, some of the other articles we've read before. We're gonna paste in here, so dollar sign credential equals get credential. Hit enter. And so that's gonna cause this Windows Power, uh, Windows pop-up box to happen. And so when this pop-up box comes up, it's saying give me a username and password, any username and password you want. It's not gonna check them against anything, it's not gonna validate you typed in the right password, it's just gonna store whatever you type in here. So I'm gonna grab my credentials, and I'm gonna blank out the screen so you people can't steal my username and password. All right, so I hit enter, so that's saved. So we'll clear the screen off. So now that's saved in the variable. And so now we wanna to connect to our online account. So to do that, we're gonna use the command like connect SPO online, and then credential, credential. All right, hit enter. And so this is reaching out to that particular site collection in our SharePoint on online connection and authenticating using the credentials we had. Since we didn't get any error messages back, right? No news is good news. So we're now authenticated there. So what we could probably do is, right, do get an SPO site, right? We talked about that one already. Boom, it returns our site collection. So we know that we've successfully gotten in there. Yay us. Now we could do a get SPO web. And so then there's our web also. So that note helps us to uh, validate that yes, we've gotten authenticated, we've got the, them installed, and everything is up and running. So if you want to figure out more about what PowerShell command lets you have, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do a get command and then dash module. And then I did an S and a tab and it filled in SharePoint PMP PowerShell online and you hit enter. So this is all the commandlets that are now available to us. All right? If we want to go up here and put some parentheses around them and do a dot count. We'll see, we now have 173 PowerShell commandlets to uh, play with. What I also like to do, oh, let's do a clear screen real quick, get back to the top of the screen. So if we do get command dash module, and then we can do something like dash verb and add. And so here's all the add. And so this is where the patterns and practices stuff is pretty fun, right? So there's an add an SPO file, right? That's a way to upload a file to a document library in SharePoint Online. So you're trying to move a bunch of files off your file share, into uh, SharePoint Online, that command will do it. One of my future videos, I'll show you how to do that. I've already solved that one. Create a view, um, add a field, you know, you can add a list. And so, uh, SP, there you go, add an SPO list item, so it uploads a, or creates a new list item for you. So you have the add stuff, or if you hit up and change add to new, you have some things like new SPO list, new SPO web. Uh, so that's pretty exciting actually, right? Because we know that the on-prem SharePoint PowerShell commandlets, they don't have any of those new functionalities for like lists or adding items or stuff. You have to get in there and you know, find the web property and from the web or the web object and from the web object, you find the list object, from the list object, you find the list method for adding. And that's how you do that on-prem. Here they've written, the Patterns and Practices group has written us uh, PowerShell commandlets to do that stuff. So that's pretty cool of them. But the downside of that is the whole reason they had to write those is because all of those things that we used to do on-prem, like go in and get the web uh, object and then get the list object and the list item object, a lot of that same type of stuff is not supported using the online API uh, and things. So they've actually had to go and write code to kind of wrap some of that functionality, some of the cool things that we've uh, learned how to do. So the good news is, is the things that they've wrapped code around, it's a lot easier to do than the other way but the things they haven't wrapped code around, you just can't do yet. So, hey, maybe you're a developer. Go out to GitHub and add the functionality you wanna see and make it available to all of us. We'd appreciate that. And in future videos, I'm gonna show you some of the PowerShell scripts that I have for things like uploading items to uh, SharePoint Online, copying lists in SharePoint Online, editing list items, et cetera, et cetera. So I've kind of recreated a lot of my internal content using the patterns and practices stuff, so I'll share that with you in future videos. Okay, so this is giving you kind of a overview of the different pieces that you need to take a look at. The only other thing I want to talk to you about real quick and then I'll let you go. So if you do a get SPO site here, 
you'll see that you know we've got uh, just the one site collection because that's the one site collection that we authenticated against right through our uh, connect earlier. But when we do things with the SharePoint Online out of the box command, let's right, and we do a get SPO site, it shows us all the site collections for our tenant. So that's one of those nuances that's the difference between using this get SPO site and that get SPO site. The other things to look at is uh, that f it caused me a lot of frustration for, frustration for some reason, right? So get SPO web shows me all the webs in my site collection. I just have one. But if I'm trying to actually get an SPO web, so I want to grab the web object to do something to it, like I wanted to run PowerShell to uh, set the title of a web for a project I was working on, I kept trying to give it the full path. So trying to give it the whole, you know, mod 809436.sharepoint.com slash site slash project slash subsite, right? I kept trying to give it that long URL. That doesn't work. You have to give it the relative URL to the site collection you're authenticated it against. So instead of that whole path, I needed to just give it slash project, and then um, that was the web I was after. So there's little nuances like that that you'll kind of have to bang your head a little bit. The good news is, is that between the GitHub stuff and you know just people making blog content or videos like this, most of those type of things are out there. So when you start searching, uh, you should be able to find the answer. If you ever get stuck, hit me up on Twitter, at Chains Cows, and I'll help, happily help you find the answer because I'm as curious as you are. All right. So I think that takes care of us for today. Um, hopefully you guys liked the video. If you did, you know, give me the old like, thumbs up, or whatever it might be. Leave some comments below. Or if you're on the YouTube version of this, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I always like subscribers. You have a special little place in my heart. Um, but if you do need anything, you can hit me up uh, also at Shane's Cows on Twitter. Or if you need any help scripting, writing this stuff for actual work reasons, Good old bold zebras, right? I'm always happy to do a little consulting to help you work through this stuff. So, all right, until next time. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.